Hello everyone. I hope you're all well. I hope you're all enjoying the weekend. I've been asked a few questions on YouTube regarding my Facebook group etc and also regarding my workshops. The reason I'm here today is I'm actually going to create a card but I thought I would address these things also at the same time. So I do have workshops and I actually list the workshops in a Facebook group and this is one of the workshops it's called Polaroid book and we actually create the whole book and the Polaroid pages and this workshop is £30 and so far there are 10 videos in the workshop because it's taken me that long to decorate all the pages. I've probably got one more video to add to the workshop as well. So these are some of the pages that we've created. I absolutely love this book and I love looking back on it because it inspires me then to create cards if I wish. So it gives me ideas to create cards. So just showing you a few of these pages and I've actually got 67 workshops actually in listed in the group and they're all now they're all available to watch whenever at your convenience so you can watch at your convenience so and they're just it's a great way if you're stuck for any motivation just to inspire you and we've just got these few pages to finish so we're going to finish them shortly now if you want to find the group let me just get my ipad you can go to facebook and then if you see there it says tracy evans i've either got tracy evans my personal facebook and tracy evans the group which is tracy evans craft addicts create share and inspire and in there i've got a whole list of online workshops and they're all listed in here 1 to 67 with a description etc and price i've also got some artwork as well for sale at the moment uh, samples that i've created projects that i've created that i can't keep every single one so every now and then i have a sale but if you want to join the group please feel free to join the group um and uh, we're a very friendly group um, and we, we we just love to share our artwork. So what I'm here for today is to create a card. Now, my previous card was with inks. So I thought, what am I going to do today? Now, we're actually in the middle. We've actually got a skip outside because we've pulled down an old greenhouse because I'm, I'm having a new one delivered because the other one was at 20 years old. And we thought, oh, we'll just take that to the dump. No. We decided we'd get a skip so I've, the skip had the greenhouse in and of course there was plenty of space left in the skip so what did I do I decided to declutter loads of clothes and uh, things like clothes that couldn't go to the charity shop uh, I like declutter things that, and honestly we filled the skip we've just got the loft to do and we filled this massive skip proves how much you just hold on to when you think you're going to use it and then never do but crikey it's taken us i'm now obsessed i keep going through all my cupboards so what i've got here is that do you like how i go off on a tangent i just waffle about anything so i've got a piece of pink frog smooth card and this is four and a half inches by six and a half inches i do love this size to work on and i know we always like to do something new but i do like to there are some things that i just love doing and this size card is something that i just enjoy doing now I've used inks on quite a few videos, so I thought we'd use paint this time. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use Dina Wakeley's Lime, Turquoise and Ocean. Nice colours and we're going to build up some depth with our colours. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add the lime, so some lime there, a reasonable amount of paint, some lime and some turquoise just a reasonable amount of paint so that it, it flows nicely on my brayer let me just move this wire which somehow i've got it tangled around everything let me just move this wire just bear with me a second there we go let's just move that so that it just doesn't catch 
Right, what I'm going to do is I'm going to bray these paints together on my bray. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to bray these colours just over my card. Now, what I'm doing is I'm flicking the paint. I'm sort of lift, flick, lift, flick, lift, flick. And it just, oh, I've got a nice little bit of grit there. And it just adds some texture to your card. Now, the more you bray over your card, the more texture that adds. Now, this is what I call, that would be a perfectly acceptable background. Perfectly acceptable. But you can go further and add more depth. So what I do now is I'm going to take some of the turquoise on its own and bray that out on my bray and then I'm going to start turn your card around just so that you hit different areas of your card now what you're doing now is because I'm using paints that are opaque they layer one on top of the other and what I'm doing now is I'm layering colour I'm layering it so that it gives me more depth. You know, like you do with your pencil crayons and your alcohol markers, you layer your colours and you obviously get better depth. Why do I always get a little crumb or a little hair or something? You'd never believe I cleaned up, would you? Thank you. Like you do with pencil crayons, when you add depth, when you add more layers, you add depth, you add um, life um, and you add a bit of oomph to your design. So that's exactly what I'm doing with paints. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to add a little bit of the ocean. Now, the ocean is a darker colour and it will add a little bit more life. But what I want you to do is really bray that colour out before you go on to the card. Because what you're doing is you're going to add light layers of that colour. Turn your card round. Don't ask me when I'm picking these bits up from. Do you know what I think it is? I think it's the sizal nest that I've been adding and I'm picking little bits up. So just adding a little bit more of that blue. But what you're going to do is make sure it's brayed out on your bray before you add it to your project. I think there must be... Some little gritty bits so let me just show you what I'm doing at the moment can you see here it's very difficult sometimes in camera you're adding these darker layers of color very lightly what I'm going to do is I'm just going to wipe this up just because what you end up doing she says can't get the wipes out what you end up doing is this paint gets all dry because it's dry on me non-stick craft sheet now and you end up picking up gritty bits so I'm just going to give that a clean and then go to our next colour now this is where everybody gets oh, it's black paint black paint everybody always gets a bit thingy of black paint and it says it's opaque so you're thinking oh, you're just going to obliterate everything you're doing we're not so just remove the skin, which you could also use in your project. And can you see, I've just got a reasonable dollop of black paint. Now what you're going to do is you're going to bray this out. And you're going to bray it off. Now what you're going to do is grab a piece of, this is a piece of scrap card I've got on one side. And I'm going to bray off some of that black paint. So you can see I've brayed off some of that black paint. And then I've got a light layer of black. And what you're going to do is flick and add some of that light layer of black paint. So you've taken off the excess and you're flicking, flicking the black paint like so. Move your card around, pick up the black paint again off your non-stick craft sheet, go to your piece of card that you've got here and take off the excess. 
So then you've just got a light layer of black paint and you're just going to add that. Now, all this is doing is it's just adding a little bit more depth to your card. Now, we're not going to finish here. So pick up more black paint like so. Take off the excess and then go back to your card. Please remember to take off the excess. Also, please remember to turn your card. So now I'm picking up the dry bits from my non-stick craft sheet and just turning it round. So at the moment, this is what I've got. I'm building up that layer. So what we're going to do now is we're going to spend a couple of minutes just cleaning up. And the reason you're going to move all your card out the way and clean up first is that when you're cleaning up black paint, you can get in a bit of a mess because it's just the nature of the beast. So what you need to do is just clean up your black paint before you do anything else. So just spend a couple of minutes just cleaning that up. Don't be in too much of a rush. Just because we're using paint doesn't mean that we can't build up those layers. Do it lightly. Let's wipe that up. Do it lightly and just take your time. And what I want to do is I want to clean my brayer because I've got that black paint on there. And obviously when I add my next layers, I don't want the black paint to be on there. So I'm just, just wiping that. So just take a few minutes now just to wipe this up. Don't be in a rush. Just take your time just to wipe it clean. There we go, that's got rid of all the black paint and it's only a couple of seconds. It's no time at all. Let's move this here. Let's bring this in. Now, because we've added that black layer of paint, that gives it a little bit more body. So what I'm going to do now is layer the colours over the top. And the colours that you lay over the top of the black look different than when you first layer them over the when you first did your first layers it they look completely different layered over the black what you what happens is because that black is down and we've added that black the other colors then become or appear to become more vibrant so now the line begins to appear more vibrant there than it does here because you've got that black on the top so what we're going to do then is i don't need the ocean i want the turquoise and you're just going to spend a few moments now whoops flicking your paper over just adding this color you can bray it off your excess onto this piece of card here. You can bray the excess up on there because you can create another background. So I'm just brayering the turquoise and just see how I brayer it out first before I add the turquoise to my card. Now what I'm doing is I'm brayering even when the brayer is quite dry just to add some texture to my card so I'm taking my time I'm keeping adding have you noticed I'm also adding small amounts of paint I don't go in too heavy with the paint I go in very lightly so I don't add too much heaviness so I'm just taking my time and at the moment, I'm just using the turquoise at the moment. Again, turning that card. And you can take off any excess onto your black piece of card because you will create another background. 
some more turquoise and I always brayer it out because I like to go on the card nice and lightly. And what you find is the black then goes into the background. I'm still going to add more of that turquoise. And if you turn the card and hit different areas each time, you get more texture. And I'll just go over to the black piece of card where I brayed. And now I'm going to go to the line. What this is, is a lesson in layering. It's a lesson in taking your time with your layering. It's, it's as if you were craning, you were using your pencil crayons and you were adding those light layers. It's a lesson in that. So I want you to just take your time. I don't want you to rush this. So I've just used the lime I'm going to go back to the turquoise and it layers each time over the top until I'm happy. So I'm going to go back to the line. And if you've, you've added quite a bit of paint to your brayer, just flick, lightly flick, add that over the top of the black just so you can see, I'm creating another background just on the side. So a little bit more turquoise. Let's add a little bit more just so that I can add some thicker layers of the turquoise. And then brayer off the excess. just making sure all the paint is removed and then what I'm going to do is take a bit of this turquoise and just bray it on this extra background that I created because I will create another card out of that just so you can see I've got a completely different background here on the side so I'm just going to take a little bit of that line because it's now a wonderful background. Let me show you. That's with the black. Look at that for a background. So that's a perfect background. Just take whatever paint's left here. And then what I'm going to do is add a bit more turquoise to my brayer, and I'm going to add it around the edges. just around the edges, a little bit more turquoise. Just to bring in a little bit more blue. So just adding that turquoise. So you're adding lots of layers to this project. Now, let's just and it's got loads of texture as this piece of card. So it's got lots of texture. I just make sure I've got none on here. So I've got this background that I've just brayed off the excess. So we can then put, just put the lids on our paints for now. And what you want to do then is spend a couple of seconds. Do you know, I've got hair on my piece of card yet again. I have no idea where the hair comes from. So I'm just going to wipe this up because it's all dry. Because obviously I was braying until the layers were dry. And you could actually use your baby wipes in a project as well maybe on one of your books or something when the baby wipes are dry just giving my 
brayer a white. And mind you, I don't know what I'm giving it a white for because I'm going to add more layers of paint anyway to the for the flower. What am I like? Never mind. So just make sure that my hands are nice and clean, which they definitely are not. Right. What I'm going to do is add more layers to this. So let me just find my is it numerator stencil 104. Stencil 104 is what I'm using. You can use any stencil that you wish. So I can't get over this because I've added the black to that other one. Just lovely. I'll definitely be creating a card out of that. Absolutely. Right, what I'm going to do now is add my black soot distress oxide ink and I'm going to add the black soot to my stencil. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to spritz that just off camera with some water, not over my cards. Do you like how I remembered then? So just spritz that with water, it's covered in water. And then I'm just going to add that to my background. And just press that on there lightly. While we press that on there, let's just mop up the black ink. There we go. So just allow that stencil to sit on the card, just for a little while. And you can tell it lifts some of the inks, lifts some of the moisture. There we go. And you have got more ink on there that you could add to your other background if you wished. Just so that you can see, we've now got this background. And you can see that moisture on there. Now, I'm not going to dab that with my kitchen roll. I'm going to dry with the heat tool. Now, the reason I'm drying with the heat tool is because the paint that we've added on there, we've added lots of layers, so it needs drying. just give that a dry so obviously you're adding lots of layers to your design so I'm just making sure that everything's dry now before we add even more layers Do you know it's hilarious I think I've put all the stamp sets away it's because I was filling the skip and then thought oh I'll come and do a video and start the video before I even get the stamp sets out. It's good, isn't it? So just give that a good dry. And turn it over and dry the back as well. Because what you've done is you've really worked the fibres of that card by adding the paint, by adding the water, the stenciling, the inks. So just give it a really thorough dry. Now we're going to reach for my stamps. Oh, my stamps. oh, my stamps are out. Oh, dear me. I did pull the stamps out. I just put them further away. There we go. I am dangerous at times. I really am. So just... And what I can't show when it's in camera is listen this is very textural this card is because you've added those layers of paint right let's see if we can find the right ink there we go so i'm going to use some versifying clay 
clay versafine clay verdant ink just because that will also lift some of that green that's in the background with the stamping so we're going to use my background stamp which you know that i adore at the moment you can use any background stamp that you've got but this is one that i just use continually all the time i definitely think text stamps are a must in creating so i'm going to use this verdant and i just want to see how it reacts with the rest of the background so i'm just going to add some stamping just in the background and i don't know how this is going to react as you can see it's not showing up very much can you see that's not showing up very much at all so what that does is that tells me that i need something more it's not enough of a contrast is what it tells me so let's just give that a wipe We need something that's going to contrast against it. So that isn't just isn't doing enough. So what we need to do first is let's just blot because we've added that ink. Let's just oh, I can't pick it up. Let's just blot. Let's just blot that. You can see where the green is lifted. So what I'm going to do, you need something that's more of a contrast. So what we're going to do is we're going to use our white paint. So the white will definitely pop more. Again, another skin you could use on a project. The white will definitely contrast more. So I'm going to bray this white paint out. And then I'm just going to dab my stamp into the white paint like so. And then I'm going to add the white stamping just to the background. So I'm using the white paint like an ink pad. So ink up the stamp. And because I'm inking it up that way, I don't quite know which area of the stamp is getting the most ink. So the reason I'm doing it that way is it makes it a little bit more random rather than so you get lighter patches darker patches so it makes it slightly more random than if i used my cut and dry foam makes it more random makes it look more arty because you don't quite know how much of that paint or not of that paint that you're picking up So just keep adding right I'm just going to wipe up the paint off my stamp it's important that you clean your stamp if you don't clean your stamp that paint will dry in the crevices of your stamp and then when you come to ink it it won't work properly let's just wipe that up use the same piece of kitchen roll let's just wipe our area up now what this does is it gives a lot more um contrast that white can you see it just gives a lot more and what i was saying about you don't know how it's going to the paint's going to be added to the stamp can you see it's lighter here and more vibrant there so it's like you get first generation and second generation stamping what that white also does is pushes that back that stenciling back into the background okay so what we're going to do now is we're going to take our flower so what i need now is another piece of card And what I'm going to do is take a little bit of the turquoise, the, the lime, I don't even know my colours, lime and 
turquoise. Take a little bit of those paints. Do you know when I'm creating, I don't know where the time goes. Take those paints, there's still a bit of white on my brayer. That doesn't matter at all. So you've just got it brayed off. You can have a little bit more paint just to give a little bit more vibrancy. I don't treat paint any different than I do inks in, in that I still layer, is, is my point. I still layer colour. There we go. I still have the same mentality that, you know, you're one step away from magic. You know, it's adding those layers. It doesn't matter whether you're using your pens whether you're using paints, whether you're using inks. Sometimes it just takes a little bit more layering and then the magic happens. So I've now got this card that I want to stamp on, but I'm going to have to dry that. So let's just give that a dry. Just make sure you give it a good dry. Now, what I want to show you is a card I've done before. Look how the colours, when you just layer them as they are, rather than layering and layering and layering. Each background is effective in different ways. I think that's what I'm trying to say, whether you use paints or inks. Right, so we've now got this ready for our stamping. We'll leave that heat tool in because we may need to dry the ink. So I'm going to use my worded petals and I'm going to use this flower here because we used the other flower last time. So it's nice just to mix it up a little bit. So we use this flower. We use my black Nocturne ink. And just I just checked the date on my Nocturne ink. I was just checking. It was a new, new-ish ink pad. This is from October because I've put the date on. And I'm just going to stamp this flower. And I only want one single flower. Now, if you wanted, you could do the flower in red. And then you'd have that pop of red against. But that's entirely up to you, depending on what project you're going for. But a vibrant red flower would also work. So you've stamped this flower onto that background. And what you've done is you've stamped onto layers of paint, which is like a plastic layer. Now, because it's like a plastic layer, that means that it's not porous. So because it's not porous, this VersaFine Claire ink just lays on the top. It doesn't soak in to the card. So therefore, you need to blot. I don't know whether you can see that on camera, but you can see that it's blotted some of that ink. So you need to blot that a couple of times. Because what you're doing is you're asking that ink to stamp onto a piece of card that's got like a barrier. So you've, you, you're going to expect it to just lay there. So just give that a dry. So just give that a dry. But just because there is a barrier there doesn't mean to say that it doesn't work. It's just that you have to adapt your ideas. And what I mean by that is that you have to dry. But that's not a problem. It just takes a few more seconds not a problem at all and what you do then is just blot again just to make sure that you've dried all that properly 
and we have there's no ink on there now so we'll just remove the heat tool and that's my husband going out for me for some um bark and some compost getting ready for the gardening season got lots of projects planned which i always love i get quite excited about having new projects that doesn't matter whether it's you know sort of revitalizing a new border or or whatever so my son even helped yesterday he did some digging he dug out some grass that had sort of overtaken in a border so he did that while me and Ian filled the skip in different ways so we all mucked in yesterday and it's great because neither of none of us can move today there's, I think there's only my son that isn't moaning about oh my back hurts that's me and Ian so you can tell we're getting a bit older so just cut out the flower just cut that out And I think what I like to say is that when you're creating a card, you might be creating a card for somebody special or you might be creating a card that you're just sticking in your journal so that you've got it as a memory. Um, so that, you, you, you know, you've got ideas to create later. Being creative is about enjoying the process. It's not always about creating for a purpose. You don't always have to create because, you know, you feel you have to. Creating can just be because you just feel like it. What we've got here is also, you've got this bit here that you could tape back up with a piece of low-tack tape and then you've got a stencil. So there's always lots of ways. So what I'm going to do now is look for my pencils, which I can't seem to find. There we go. Got my polychromo pencils. Let me just find a nice bit of turquoise and something a little bit darker shade. There we go. Can you tell which colours are used the most? So what I've got is I've got this darker shade, which is turquoise. Does it say what? Turquoise two o nine two o one one five five I think it is one five five and then the one that I use stacks of times where is that colour so that's just a paler colour and what you can do is just add. A little bit more colour to your flower because what's great about these polychromos is that you can add the colour over paint so I can add a little bit more of the blue over the top so let me just so I'm just using a flicking motion just to add a little bit more of the turquoise just to my flower. Just a little bit more turquoise. Just to give it a little bit more, more depth. Just a little bit of the darker colour. And it's just refining everything. Just giving it a little bit more bit more life so it's just refining it yes you've added that paint and if you haven't got pencil cranes you can just leave you can just leave it with the paints it's entirely up to you and what I'm going to do is just add a little few touches of white which I will pick up and I will show you so I'm following the lines of where I've drawn the flower and just adding some delicate touches of white just to make it pop 
a little bit more. So just going over, and I'm literally using a scribbly little line, just so that it's just, let me just lift that up, just so that it's got those touches of white just on the flower, just so it lifts it a little bit more. Oh. Now let's be a good girl and put the pencils away. I must have held it a different way that way. There's the blues, there we go. So I'll be a good girl and we'll actually put these pencils back, which let's admit it, it's unheard of because Tracy normally leaves them on a desk till she's got about 15 pencils out. But my desk already needs a stack of tidying, so. So what you can see now is obviously it's going to get lost if you just place it down like that. So let's grab our... two and a quarter inch circle that we're going to add here, like so. And then our flower just pops beautifully against that white, just pops beautifully. But what we will do is we're just going to add a little bit of the blue stamping. So I'm going to use my Warm Breeze and we're going to use our text stamp. What did I do with the acrylic block? Why do I just dump these things down? Right, I'm going to use the acrylic block just to add a little bit of stamping. So I'm using that Warm Breeze. So that'll go on here. So we just need a little bit of first generation, second generation and third generation stamping. There we go. <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me. Coughing while barking while we're doing a video. Very professional. So we're going to add. I can't pick it up now. This to our project. So let's take that adhesive. So you've got that first generation and second generation stamping. So that represents like the um, ocean and the turquoise in the background. So the first generation is like the ocean and the second generation is like the turquoise. go and then just place that there like so now again it's trying to lay onto that background that you've added that plastic layer so you need to make sure that you just hold it down for a few seconds just so that it grabs hold and what I'm going to do is go round with my ink tense pencil just around the circle and this time, because of those paint layers, I'm, I'm pressing on a little bit harder than I normally do with the Inktense pencil, just to lay down more of that pigment. Then we're going to blend it out. I don't think I've got much water on there. Let's just pick up a bit of water. Oh, it was. So just blend that out. Just go round and blend it out. Now you've got that distress oxide underneath, don't forget, from that stenciling. So you will reactivate some of that. Because that's the nature of the beast, that's what oxides do. So just... There we go. That's it. Just wipe that bit of moisture up, just so that you can see, you can see that shading around there. So what I'm going to do, 
I want a little bit more life in this, so let's just grab let's grab this little mat I've got. Now you know that I've got no special tools, no special mats. So I'm just going to use the back of my scissors. I have got a ball tool that I could use, but I'm just going to use the back of my scissors and just give some dome, give this a bit of doming. Just so my flower's slightly domed. Can you see that? It's slightly domed, just to give it a little bit more life. So I'm going to want to... Um, I think we'll use my ultra thick gel medium. It's got my ultra thick gel medium. And we're going to use some sisal nest, which I'll just cut off camera because there's no room on my desk. So we'll just add some sisal nest. Like so. go let's pick up a palette knife um let's decide where this flower is going so it's going around about there so let's just place some of that down add the sisal nest to the background like so and then we can add a uh, big lump of something there. Let's just add a little lump just behind the flower. And the flower's slightly domed, which I like. Just gives it a little bit more, more life. Oh, I just love it. Absolutely love it. And I'm always trying my hardest to bring you different ideas for card, journal pages, whatever. I'm always racking my brain so that all your pieces look a little bit different in some shape or form. So let's just clean our, let's move this back. Move that out of the way. Let's just clean our area a little bit, just so that we're not fighting. So I'm going to grab some washi tape. And I'm going to use my cut, tear and layer washi tape. I want that plant weird so before we do anything else let's just grab that plant wording so that we've got it so just have that ready so we've got that plant weird let's just leave that on the edge of something and what I'm going to do is I'm going to add some layers of washi just to ground my flower So I love this washi because it's got different textures, but also when you've created a layered background like I have, the white in that washi tape also brings some lightness to the design. So you've got those touches of black in the washi tape, but also those touches of white as well. And what you're doing is you're building texture with your washi tape. So instead of stamping, you're bringing texture with your washi tape. And then we've got that weird plant just at the bottom because that's rather apt. We'll save that. So we'll just place that on the washi tape just so we keep that. And what, what we haven't done is I'm nearly forgetting there is just to bring some balance. Let's just remove that little fat bit. Let's 
to bring some balance at the top edge of the card. So again, just adding those layers of the washi. Just to bring some balance where we've added it at the bottom. So let me just move that out of the way. So I'm just going to add some white splatters so I can see what it looks like before I add anything else. Obviously, I need to get the white gel pen, the white Posca pen working. And the white against that painted backdrop really works. It works against that painted backdrop. So let me just go to my embellishment cupboard. Just going to add an embellishment. So I'm going to add my index clip. You can add whatever embellishments you wish. I do like adding an embellishment. Just place that to the top, like so. I'm going to take a little, one of my little domes. Just to add that over the, the P. Just to add that over the P. Obviously it will dry clear and I will lift it up shortly but it will dry clear. That glue will but it'll obviously take a few moments for that to dry clear. And what I want to do is take the word flower from the same stamp set. Let's just place this back. I've got, I've got things everywhere but you're used to that now aren't you? Let me just place that back. Uh, I still love that other background we've created as well. I absolutely love that. So take that flower. We've got a scrap of card somewhere. Now I can see that I've got ink on my fingers. So I'm just going to give that a wipe just so that we don't get in a total mess we don't want to ruin our card so we'll stamp that word with black nocturne ink again using pink frog card there we go let's just make it a bit longer and let's see what it looks like you see you could make it the length but i don't like that because it jars against this so just cut that a bit shorter I'm going to have that word there. I love these pops of white against that beautiful background. I do like them pops of white. And I do like the natural hessian, hessian, um, sizal against the background. Oh, just moved the, no we haven't. So just, do you like I'll keep talking to myself? Right, where's where have I just put that now? There it is. So let's just add a bit of shading. Now, have you noticed I'm not rushing the steps? I just take my time doing each step. So I'm just adding some of that shading 
just around the flower weird. Turn my card around because it's a lot easier if I turn the card around. And I've just moved my index clip with my hand because I'm good like that. Because it takes a few moments for it to grab hold. And of course I've put the index clip on, which is not a good idea when you're going to add it to a card blank. So we'll just... So we're just going to add this to a black mat because that will definitely pop against that black mat. Just stand up because, as you know, I always find it easier if I stand up. I do love these bits of sizal just on the, the card. Now let's get a clean piece of paper because we want to add this to a white card blank. My white card blank is five by seven, so the black mat is a quarter of an inch bigger. There we go. And again, I will stand up just because I can see that a little bit better. Just give that a few seconds just to grab hold. Let's make sure that index clip is straight. Else that'll play with my head. So you can see it so far. You do know what I'm going to have to add now, don't you? I can hear you all saying it. I've got to add a black beard. Well, you should have guessed that I was going to add a black beard. Now, I've got a black beard already stamped out because it was from a previous card, a previous project, so why not use it? Scissors vanished. Oh, they're there. But the other thing is, it depends what kind of black beard you want to use. That I've added a pattern to by stamping another stamp on it, and that is the plain black beard. So it's entirely up to you. And it's lucky because the black beard is facing the right way for me. So that's perfect. So it's just stamped with black Nocturne ink, which is just perfect. And after this video, it's back to filling the skip. And then I'll probably get back to finishing my Polaroid book. There we go. Let's just add some black ink around the edges. Just around the edges of that black beard. There we go. And that black beard goes nicely there. It does indeed. I love, absolutely love the size of these black beards. They're just the perfect embellishment for me. They work beautifully with all the designs. I just love them. And I think what I'm going to do is just add a couple more splatters if I can get my pen to work. That's better, proper splatters, that's what I want. There we go. Let's remove that. And this is your card finished. And I'm absolutely loving it. You can still see the layers in the background. The flower is domed, just so that you can see that. It is domed absolutely love it 
So I hope you enjoy creating that. I can't wait to see your interpretation. Thank you all for your lovely comments. They really are appreciated. I read every single one of them uh, and they're very much appreciated. So thank you. I hope you all have a lovely week ahead and I'll see you all soon. Bye for now. Love to all.